Hello everyone, we're going to go over the Brompton install uh, in this video. And this video is meant to complement the information on our website. Uh, you can find the link in the description below. So what we're doing here is actually just going to go over all of the individual parts for doing uh, Brompton kit install, uh, excluding the torque sensor or the pedal assist sensor. The so first thing we're going to do is remove the old front wheel and tire and transfer the tire over to the pre-built electric motor wheel and uh, then reinstall it back on the bike. So the first thing you're going to do is just uh, remove the air from the tire while it's still on the bike so you can get the tire through the brakes and then we'll pull off the wheel. Once I've got the wheel off the bike, we're going to go ahead and remove the tire. So you might need a tire lever for that. So thank you. Okay, so the tire is removed. Set the old rim aside with the old hardware. And we'll transfer this tire over to the new wheel. So I've got my new pre-built wheel here. It has all the hardware on it. I'll leave that on there for now. I'll just install the tire. Boom, tire's installed. We're not gonna inflate it just yet because we need to have the tire deflated to get it through the brakes on the bike. So with the uh, SOFP motor that we include, which is the geared Brompton motor, we have uh, two different uh, sets of hardware on each different side of the axle. So on the Brompton bike, the uh, wire uh, exits on the non-hook side of the motor. And we need to make sure that if you look at the hardware that's included with it, on that uh, side with the, the hook, you have to have a thin torque plate, a thin washer, and a thin nut. On the wire exit side, we have a thick torque plate, a regular washer, and a regular acorn nut. So we're going to take off the hardware, making sure we know which side of the motor the hardware goes on. And then we're going to install the motor into the fork, followed by putting the torque plates into the holes on the, uh, on the fork itself. So the thin torque plate goes on the non-drive side, the side with the wire loop. Goes torque plate, then loop, then washer, then nut. So once the hardware is uh, installed um, loose, you can take the bike out of a stand or if it's still on the ground, push the, the wheel down into the fork so that then you can tighten the, uh, the nuts with the wheel totally settled in the fork. In this video, I'm just going to do it up in the stand though. So... Now that the motor is installed, we're going to move on to installing the motor controller. So the motor controller goes on a bracket and that attaches to the back side of the brake stud. And we include some hardware with that uh, so that you can install that well. So you're going to remove this small little nylock nut and make sure you don't lose that. The bracket that the controller is included on installs on the back side of that bolt. So this bolt is what holds the front brake on, and so you need to make sure that that is done up properly. You can also use that to adjust your front brakes. So be sure to check the alignment of the brakes before doing uh, this bolt up to its final torque. For the next step, after the motor is installed, we're going to go ahead and route the wiring. So on the Zofo motor, the geared Brompton motor, the wire exits on the drive side. And so we need to route the motor controller's wire for the motor around the front of the fork behind the brake. And then we'll connect the motor up to the motor controller, noting that there is an alignment arrow on both uh, 
the motor side and the controller side. Once that's done, you'll want to grab some of the zip ties included with your wiring kit and zip tie the motor cable to the fork here above the connector. After the wheel and the motor controller are installed, we're going to install the cycle analyst next. So that involves undoing this bolt and installing the longer bolt that's included with the cycle analyst package. So this bolt pinches the handlebars and we've made it longer so you can attach a cycle analyst to the backside. So you should make sure to adjust your handlebars if they've moved around when you removed the old bolt and tighten it up to the proper torque. Now we'll grab the cycle analyst and the included nut and install the cycle analyst on the back side of that bolt. All right. So we're also going to install the throttle as well as the on-off multifunction switch. You might find you have to cut the grip down a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna next install the multifunction switch for the CA. I'm gonna remove it. You don't have to take anything off the handlebars to slide it on because it has a hinge. Okay, so now uh, we need to do all the wiring. We'll plug all of our attached components in the throttle going to the throttle plug, MF switch going to its own switch, the cycle analyst plug itself, go down and follow the front brake loop to get plugged into the motor controller. Pedal assist sensor will get plugged in. So we, on the e-rider sensor, I've routed the wire back behind the frame through the wire loop before I plug in the, uh, the sensor. Okay. So at the handlebar, typically like to route the wires downwards before coming back up into the bundle. So we'll follow both the brake lines down to make our, our bundle for our cycle analyst. We use a couple of small sections of spiral wrap just to uh, route the wire nicely. So with the Brompton, when you fold the bike, you'll notice that the wires actually need to slide through these uh, channels that are on the bike. And to make sure that all the extra components that we're adding don't interfere with that, we need to check just how, how far they're going to go. Um, so I'm going to just start my spiral wrap at about this point to make sure it's not going to bunch up as, uh, as the bike's being folded. So the last uh, section of wire we need to deal with is this small section right here. I'm going to choose to not link all these wires together with the main um, brake wires and shifter wires on the on the bike just to give them a little bit more freedom to move around. I'm going to use a short section here, spiral wrap. So this way we have the cycle analyst cable, the battery cable, and the torque sensor cable all coming through to join up together here. We have just a small section of spiral wrap here to link them before they all go into the bundle. And then on the motor side here, I'm just gonna link up the CA plug, the front brake, and the battery wire with a really short section of uh, a spiral wrap as well. So that's all the wiring you need to do that's in the stand. But it's really important to note that you should really test 
the functionality of the folding before you go for your first couple rides. You want to make sure that there's enough kind of play. You might need to adjust the locations of the spiral wrap or trim them. But uh, you want to really check to make sure that no, uh, no wires are getting pinched between any metal sections when you do the fold and that uh, there's not too much tension on any one of these wires. For the most part, all of the tension should really be in these brake and shifting cables. Uh, that's, those are kind of the shortest wires on this system right now. Jeez. All right, so we're just gonna test the fold here to make sure there's no pinch points. So again, we need to make sure that these wires are gonna be able to move freely in and out of the channels on the bike. And uh, we want to make sure that, you know, the battery wire and any of the signal wires aren't getting pinched when we do our fold here. So undo all the things and we'll test the fold and look out to see if we need to make any adjustments. Great, so you can drop the seat, lock everything in. There's our folding electric Brompton. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below in the comments or send us an email to infodbikes.ca. Thanks for watching.